to Pop on Film. I am Bonnie Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing. It probably worth a Google. And this is episode five hundred of the podcast, as far as you know, and. Uh, this will be our last episode of the podcast. After this, we will be doing may maybe a, a, a few specials, a few extras. Yeah. Uh, here and there. But this really is the end of an era. And it's very uh, e exciting and sad. This is episode 500. I think I already said that. Uh, Bunny specifically... Uh, told me not to write anything for the podcast. So I have not written anything for the podcast. Right. So we could just kind of so shoot, cool. shoot the breeze a little bit, you know, kind of wrap I, I, things up, maybe start talking I, about the movie earlier, early, whatever. Maybe. Maybe. I, uh, I did have something planned for this final episode. I was going to, I was going to contact you, but you contacted me like right before I was going to contact you and said, don't write anything. But what I was going to do is I was going to point by point, bring back every segment in short little bursts. Yeah. I was going to do, uh... I don't know homework. I would have figured something out. Uh, probably the first homework. We would have watched that stupid uh, Ultraman episode. Yeah. And then uh, Steve Sistork approximations. Apparently in 1996, Jerry Springer was at, you know, his peak. And everyone remembers all of the horrible things that he did. But he also occasionally dipped his toes in some serious things and i saw an episode that i had never i never knew existed and it's it, it's these two kids and they're being interviewed and because of botched blood infusions or whatever both of these little kids had hiv they were hiv positive okay. and jerry it's a very serious episode and jerry springer is interviewing him but you might be wondering why i'm talking about this we're, we're almost there they they're talking to the kids and they're like, oh, very sad and and uh, trying to talk to them. You're 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 normal kids. What are you kids like doing? Oh, playing video games and going to the mall and music. And they both love at that time the WWF. Oh, who are your favorite people? Oh, we like the Undertaker and Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, but we love Razor Ramon. Okay. Because it was still Razor Ramon, the original Razor Ramon. So then all of a sudden music plays and fucking Scott Hall, Razor Ramon comes out, greets the kids, and then gives the kids an authentic WWF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship, saying that, sure, he wrestles 300 days of the year, but these kids here, they're the real fighters. Yeah. And it's like, damn, how come Scott Hall died? And I saw just the same shit over and over again and nothing about like him doing like that the nicest thing on the Jerry Springer show of all people. Yeah. I think that it, it, I'm surprised that more people don't know about this. And then I was going to do uh, notes from the bookstore. I had to take Q to their uh, doctor's appointment, which was in Norman. And while we were there, I said, hey, you guys want to go get lunch at Sam's Club? Because they've got the good, cheap food. So we went and got some pizzas and some sodas. And then after that, because we were nearby and we were all super full, it was the first time that Eleanor has eaten her entire pizza at the store. At the Sam's Club. She had never done that before. And so we were all kind of food drunk. So 
we went to the Barnes and Noble that I used to work at. Okay. And uh, really shows you how times change and how I have changed in a small period of time. Because that place is boring as fuck. <laughs> and I just wanted to blow my brains out being in there. It was probably safe for Steve. Yeah. But May Lynn's <clears throat> not having any of that shit. I'm too beautiful to do boring work like that now. Oh, that's how I see. That's how I'm looking at it. And then, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but bouncing off you being beautiful, I am really pissed off. Where the fuck is our documentary? Fuck you, Will Ferrell. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So it's where's ours? We deserve one. So. Our Netflix documentary is Bunny and May Lynn going on a, a trip around the world, but we just get really stoned and go to Casa Bonita. Yes. And maybe uh, Meow Wolf Convergence Station. That's in Denver. Or, that. or what we could do is we can look at pictures of our trip from around the world, except those pictures are actually other people's pictures with other people in them. Yeah, I'd be down with that. I'd be all right with that. Yeah, where's where's our documentary? Yeah. I was being interviewed for here, a documentary. Here we are at us. the Eiffel Tower, and it's two or more completely different people standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. there. I was being interviewed for a documentary for a while, but then yes, that were. just fell through because because uh, the filmmakers moved yeah. states, and now they're not they're not talking to me. Uh so that sucks. But it's one of a million things that have come and gone. I was in pre production for a kids' TV show for a small period of time. Yeah, I had a producer who wanted to do the Mister Steve show, but. That didn't happen. Oh, Steve's Stubs of the Week. I saw Joker 2, The Dark World. I I, I miss that segment the most. I am less up on what's going on in theater without that segment. Yeah, I saw saw Joker 2, Live, Laugh, Love. Yes. Joker 2. Joker I, one and a half from the files of police squad. I, I probably shouldn't care enough to be as happy as I am at Joker two tanking. Okay. Okay. I have reached a point in my life because I'm in my mid to late forties now and I'm trans and being trans. I've just stopped. I've finally reached a point where I can finally comfortably say that I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks about me. And you really have to develop a real thick skin when you're trans because a good portion of America will just want you dead. And so I've gotten to the point where I don't need to like something or dislike something to to prove anything to anyone. I'm going to like what I like. And that's it. I, I have a hard time believing in guilty pleasures. But, so I'm just going to come out and say it. I fucking love Joker 2. The really? Sweet pool. Yeah. Yeah, because the first film, remember the first film, the reason why I didn't like it was because it was like a fucking incels wet dream. And there were talks of like shootings and Nazis and far right, like white supremacists showing up. Yeah. And 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 so like the bros loved it and it was sort of like a a bit of like a far right anarchist's take on the Joker. But then it, I liken Joker to Electric Boogaloo to Airplane 2. Oh, Airplane 2 is horrible. No, 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 but let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why. Okay, so the first airplane, they got an actual movie 
an actual serious movie that is free on YouTube that you can watch, and they purchased the rights to it. They got the script, and they literally just shoved jokes into a pre-existing script. And so it was a good parody, and it was also that movie. And so when I saw The Joker, I'm like, okay, this is the following films. This is... Uh, taxi driver. This is the king of comedy. This is Joe. The, all of these like seventies movies, um, but with the Joker. And, and uh, when I saw that they were doing a Joker too, I'm like, okay, so what is this one going to be based on? But see, with Airplane Two, they threw everything out the window because now. The creators of Airplane 2 are creating an original, completely made from cloth sequel based on what was a parody. Yes. That's like Weird Al Yankovic making a totally original song called Like a Surgeon 2. And it's not based on any other Madonna song. It's a sequel to Like a Surgeon. You know, what are you going to do with that? You could try and make it exactly like the first one, which is what they did with Airplane 2. Well, except they put it in space. Weird, but, Weird Al is no longer making parody music for me. No. Uh, because yes. Because generally, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I rarely hear the song that he is parodying. Fun fact, uh, I, I only caught... hear Weird Al doing a really cool original Weird Al song. Over the last couple of days, I have caught Eleanor and Maxwell listening to the newest Weird Al Yankovic parody polka. Yeah. And it made me feel really happy because now Weird Al Yankovic, he's still out there, but he's still parodying popular music. And, and like some of the songs in that are even songs that I don't know. But the kids know, and they like it. it. It meant a lot to me to see that, you know? Yeah. But uh, with Joker 2, jokier, yeah. they decided to make it a 100% completely different film. It is a surreal, bizarre, comic book twisted romantic musical slash courtroom drama that is in no way like the first in any way whatsoever and so i see why people hate this this is a completely different film this is a 100 percent different film from the joker and it breaks a lot of cinema rules and it doesn't 100 percent give you answers and it, it's very bizarre and very weird and musical numbers will pop up and you're not sure what's real and what's not. It starts off with a cartoon. Okay. A Joker Looney Tunes cartoon. Like I was thinking before the movie started, I said, you know, one of the, like the biggest thing I liked about the, the first Joker movie was how it started with the old Warner Brothers logo. Will they be starting this one with the old Warner Brothers logo again? And they didn't do that. Instead, it was a Looney Tunes cartoon with the Joker as if the Joker was one of the Looney Tunes. It was really bizarre. And it, it's so different from the first one that I can absolutely see why so many people are just getting on the shitting on Joker 2 bandwagon. But it was so fucking weird and different. I had fun with it. I'll probably watch it a few more times in theaters. Huh. I like it. I don't know. I I think I'm at the point where I, I don't even want to like it. <clears throat> yeah. You know? I didn't want to like it. Yeah. I did not want to like this film. I was ready to shit on it. I went to the first showing at 8 p.m. on Thursday. There were three of there were five people in the theater and two of them walked out. Yeah. So, yeah, no, people fucking hate this movie, but I love this movie because it's absolutely not what the Proud Boys probably wanted in a sequel. Yeah. They turned the Joker and turned it into a bizarre romantic musical. 
I, I, I loved it. I, I really liked it. And I feel bad that I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Steve Stubbs. What other uh, uh, things have we done? Uh, Q is asleep. Otherwise, I would have, I would, I would discuss Q and Jeannie's break time hijinks. Yes. Or let's not forget any of the other spinoffs that happened. Uh, Destiny and Days. Yeah. Whatever the fuck that was. And uh, Maxwell Tonight After Dark, which yes. was surprisingly raunchy. And let's not forget um, Natasha's podcast, which was all about her favorite subject, Kid Rock. Yes. And Puff Daddy. It was a different time. And in retrospect, you know, it didn't age well. But here we are, the last episode. Isn't that crazy? Ten years, and it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Bunny. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Our movie this week is, uh, again, I saw the TV Globe. This is a beautiful movie. And uh, I have seen some trans people, a lot of trans people, embrace this and getting the I saw the teeth the pink opaque tattoo on the back here and I absolutely yeah. want to get that myself but I've also seen a lot of trans people hate this movie and I've seen reviews from trans people saying it, don't get me wrong I didn't hate I saw the TV glow it was a good movie and it would have been even better if the writer and director wasn't scared to say the word trans and it's like, okay, I can kind of see that, but it's an analogy. It's like a bibli biblical story. It's a parable. Okay, so first off, so first off, in any community, and the trans community is no exception, you're going to have a certain percentage of stupid trans people. Yeah, that's just just that's just how it goes. I mean, I, yeah, I, I I find this movie to be a masterpiece and i find it that because there are so many fucking ways you can look at this movie you, you can know? look at it from a you can look at it from a straight buffy the vampire slayer sense yeah and 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 it's all valid and you can look at this film as just being about young people getting hyper fixated on things yeah. Or you could see this as the trans allegory that it was meant to be. Well, I was I, 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 I was certainly thinking more things like, does Maddie even exist? Yeah. And, yeah. and things of that nature where you, you could really examine the movie and have have several different meanings and views on one particular scene and they're all valid yeah yeah like there like there is no one right way to watch this movie absolutely absolutely and and it's also for me a trans woman just a scary ass horror story because when i saw justice Smith as an old man who was miserable still working in his crappy little job. I absolutely saw me in my 50s and 60s as Steve rotting away in that fucking bookstore. Yeah. I absolutely saw that if I was too scared to transition and and you know, an alternate universe me, but here I am. The movie was. It, oh, the people call it like one of the best horror movies of the year, and it's like horror movie. I don't know what you're getting out of this. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess technically it is. I, I don't, I don't find it very horrific, 
I find it odd and creepy. Yeah. I do find it that, but I don't find it like a horror movie. And if I was going to rate it on like the best horror movie of the year, I, I, I don't think I would do that. Yeah. Because everybody knows what the best horror movie the movie of the year is. It's the year of our Lord, 2024. We made a movie where a pool eats people. Yes. It's going to win all the Oscars. It's going to sweep the Oscars, the Emmys, the Grammys, the Tonys, the MTV Movie Awards, everything. The MTV Music Awards, all of it. Kids' Choice, Night Swim. Yeah. Did you like the post that I did on the Facey pages? It was a fun uh, look back at his at the history of the podcast. Yes, I did. I was really proud of that. If Stinky Miller is in the audience, go home. Yeah. And that guy who was a shooter we predicted him. We predicted a shooting. I need to find the spoils of Babylon. That was fun. Yeah. That was really fun. Uh, little boy. Oh, what a piece of shit that was. Star Wars Uncut. The Rocky Summer. All American Christmas Carol. We did a fucking Doris Day movie. And it was all my wife's fault. Yes, it was. How bizarre. Oh, and I found uh, our old friend, Mary Jean Powers. Remember Mary Jean Powers, that lady who thought that she was an angel? Oh, yes. From Octoris. The, the necessary levels of positive energy and vibrations to make the quantum leap happen? Yeah. Yeah. It, she seemed to have a good head on her shoulders. I bet, I bet she's fine. Yeah. Yeah, she's probably fine. And the, the, the fascinating thing about the current generation and, uh, you know, like TikTok and, and stuff like that is seeing the younger generation finally tune in to shit and, and I get really happy about it. Like, I've been seeing a lot of clips from Drop Dead Gorgeous and oh. it's like, oh, thank you. That movie deserves it. And I've also seen the same thing happen with uh, Psycho Gorman. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people post Psycho Gorman clips. I saw four different um, accounts post the same clip of, I do not like hunky boys. Or do I? And that made me happy. And I am hoping to hear back from Johnny Paradise, the man who made a coronavirus conspiracy. You haven't heard from him back yet? No, I mentioned him late last night. Well, I I mentioned I I messaged him last night while high. Okay, I wasn't high. I had taken a a, a bunch of Dayquil and then an edible. And then I took a hot shower, and then I started seeing the hat man. His entire body is made of dark energy, and also I owe him a good amount of money. Okay. He's pissed at me. Yeah. So that happened last night. I haven't heard back from Johnny Paradise. I will let you know. I will let you and the group know. I, Very I, proud I, really, of I really thought that you would have heard back by now, because seriously, how busy could he be? Yeah, 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 kind of, kind of, sort of. I sent him the the just the movie coronavirus conspiracy. I sent him the entire uh, SoundCloud recording of that part of the podcast and told him, FYI, we recorded this twenty, you know, two years ago. I don't know what the fuck we said, and apologize in advance. Yeah, but that was fun. I forgot the existence of Ram Ranch. I saw, I re-saw Coronavirus Conspiracy this week. I re-watched a few of the films that we discussed. Fucking, um, Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar is one of the best movies ever made. Yes. We love Barb and Star. 
I love that movie so much. Every time I, I we go to Sam's Club, I can't tell you how many times I've rewatched that movie. Yeah, ten every time one. that I, every, ten minute one. Every time that I go to uh, Sam's Club and I see all the sodas there, I think of getting a suicide. Yeah, and it it just it it brightens it brightens me. Every but time I see lot... Reba McIntyre, all I can think of is Trish. Yes. Oh, it's Trish. Oh, she's so special. She's so wonderful, isn't she? Oh. I want to... I'm a woman. There's nothing I want more than to join Talking Club. Yeah. That's all I want. There is a group at church, Women, Wine, and Holy Fellowship, and I went to one meeting. And yeah kind of good now i'm 47 it's weird to go to a church function and be the youngest person there oh episcopalianism uh uh it veers towards the old and very financially secure yeah so i stick out like a me in church so so is there an average age at one starts going to the Episcopal Episcopal Church? I mean, like, like from what are, I can are tell, they like looking at their watches and being like, "All right, I'm seventy. No, it's time less, to wrap this shit up. All right, it's God, less, how do we fix it, this shit? It's less about how old you are and more about." how financially secure you are. Yeah. Because as far as I can tell, the main uh, thing of Episcopalianism is everyone I know who's in Episcopal has money. Except me, they all got cash. Yeah. And so I guess when you're financially secure enough, you're allowed to go to church and become Episcopal. Last episode, Bunny. Last yeah. episode. I feel like we could wrap it up now, but I, I, I want to have a bit more time to just really, you know, finish it on a high note. So, yeah. like, it, maybe we should take the last break and then wrap up the podcast in a nice, neat little bow. What it, do you mean? I don't know. I, 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 I just... I, I don't know if we have enough time right now to end it. Do you think we do? What are you talking about? Well, you said that we might talk about the movie now and finish early. Oh, no, 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 no. Now and then later in just okay. the movie. No, no, okay. no, no. I mean, okay. we would just Good. start blabbing about it early to give it as much time as we needed to do. Okay, good. I thought that you wanted to end it pretty quickly there. No, no, no. No. Every every once in a while, every once in a while, a, a thing will pop up from the podcast. Primarily, it's uh, our, our history portion. Yeah. Like Max, like Max came to me sometime this past week and said, Other Mother, do you know how potato chips were invented? And I'm like, bitch, please. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. It was made out of spite. Do you know how a microwave was made? A man had chocolate in his pants yes. and thought he shit himself. I got all of this. Flying midgets on a kite in Central Park. I know my history. Yes. Uh, so I was doing my own uh, one woman adult story times at an art gallery in the gay district of Oklahoma city. And, uh, one of the last ones that I did, I was doing trivia throughout the audience. And there were, uh, two elementary school teachers that were there that had always wanted to come see me do a story time. And now they were watching me and I had them do trivia and it was always the exact same trivia, but they didn't, uh, I asked both teachers. I gave both teachers trivia. The first teacher did not know who the Secretary of the Interior was during President Warren G. Harding's administration. Oh, my God, no. 
well, no one's ever gotten that right. But the other teacher knew that Albert B. Fall's major political scandal was called the Teapot Dome scandal. She knew that. And it blew me away. She is still my absolute hero. The first person ever to get an Albert B. Fall question right. Nice. I'm really proud of that. That's another thing that pops up. Albert B. Fall. Ah, last episode. A decade. Yeah. A decade. We started this podcast and I was a dude. Yes. Jesus. And you were a plucky 19-year-old. Yes. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada. With, with stars in my eyes, you know, full you... of ambition, until I and got you... off the bus and somebody stole all my albums. But thank God Wolfgang von Colt was there. That yes, I can of lean course. On, you know? I want to rock! <laughs> you you came you you moved to uh Colorado with nothing but a dance belt and a tube of chapstick. Yes. Uh and then you started doing plays. I remember when you did Backdraft the musical. What was this? I mean the I it, before you decided to do the podcast, you were doing plays. I remember when you put on Backdraft the musical. The fire yes. department came. It was a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, we had a little bit of a problem with the pyrotechnics. A uh, yeah. couple of people might have well, been seriously injured. Uh, well, also lighting a piece of paper on fire. But it was it. like the Best done. performance I've ever done. Yes, absolutely. But last episode of the podcast, our movie is I Saw the TV Glow. Maybe we should take a break and then come back and start discussing the film. We should take a break. Okay, I concur. We will be right back with more of the Popon film after this. Do 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 do. Do 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 and break. 